Okay, hello everyone. In this video I will actually explain you how the Ethernet collision detection algorithm will work, which is part of the Ethernet protocol. So by the end of this video you will understand this float diagram completely. Um, so let's just talk about our basic setting that we have. So let us assume um, one computer wants to transfer some data over the wire and uh, he is connected to another or more computers and just for reference the leftmost computer will be computer A and he wants to send data to computer C and the sending of data will also be according to the Ethernet protocol so the data will be encapsulated inside an Ethernet frame and having all the correct header files set but what's also happening at this point in time is that computer B already started sending some data and as we saw in the last video there is some certain time that the computer B would need in order to occupy the entire medium. So when computer A starts to transfer some data, computer A doesn't know that another computer is actually already trying to occupy the cable and computer A will start sending and then we will see what's happening here. So computer A in the beginning will assemble a frame. And as we already know, an Ethernet frame can have up to 1518 bytes. And as we saw in the last video, it starts with the preamble, then there comes the destination and the source address, um, followed by the Ethernet type, and then there is the data payload, and at the end the checksum, all those things that I won't explain in detail anymore. All those together create the Ethernet frame. Then what we have is we have several counters. The first one is the attempt counter, and it's always been set to 1. The first thing that we do is we actually listen on the cable is some other host or station transmitting data right now. And again I want to refer to our setting here. Even though computer B already tries to transmit some data, the wave hasn't traveled to our computer yet, so we cannot actually see that the data is there. So if the answer would be yes, which, which it is not, we would wait for a clock cycle and then ask again, is someone else still transmitting? But if the wire is free, and in our situation right now, the wire actually is free, we just go out and try to transmit the first bit. And what you can see now is, is that the first bit is on the wire. And here in this moment, the time of the computers in our video are frozen because I want to explain this. As we saw in the last video, on a 100 Mbit Ethernet device, sending one bit will make three meters in the wire within one clock cycle. And what's happening then is that this bit is on the wire, it's not arrived at any computer yet. The other bits are also in this clock cycle moving closer towards computer A. And what's happening then is that we ask ourselves, do we detect a collision? So what collision means actually means is do we receive data at the same point in time or at the same moment in time where we actually transfer data? And as you can already see is the answer will be no because there is no collision yet that we can measure at our computer. So you go to the next step of the diagram and you ask yourself am I finished? So at this point in time a clock counter is at uh, 1 right now and we have one bit transmitted or put on the wire and now we will send the next bit which will be the zero so I mean in our model we assume that sending a zero is uh, just don't put any voltage on the cable and again we do this for one clock cycle the clock cycle counter is not two now and we have two bits of information that we put on the wire again we ask ourselves do we detect a collision or not and since the data from computer B has not arrived, we didn't detect a collision, and we put the next bit of information on the cable. And this goes around, but maybe at this time we detect a collision, because the data finally has arrived, and now we see, well, maybe something is wrong. Another computer is already trying to block the shared medium, and um, we also tried to block the medium and this obviously collides. So the first thing that the algorithm will now ask itself is, is the attempt counter bigger than the maximum number of attempts that are defined? This is usually a number something like 20. And if the answer is yes, 
um, we would stop here and, and tell the user we can't transfer the data. But probably the answer will be no. And what we do then is we assign the weight counter a random number usually shorter than 16. And once we have assigned the weight counter this number, um, what we will do is we will wait. And we wait for 512 clock cycles. Why 512? Well, we have already seen that an Ethernet frame has to have at least 64 bytes, which is 512 bits. And this is the time that is usually taken to occupy the entire shared medium. When we detect the collision with us, the other device will also detect our data arriving at this. So while we wait, the other device will also realize, oh, there is a collision. And both devices have this random algorithm. So the idea is that the random number of those two computers will not be the same. And now every time we wait for this minimum frame size, or for the so-called slot time, we will decrease our weight counter. And of course our clock is, is increasing here. And then we ask ourselves, is the weight counter still bigger than zero? And if yes, we will wait another slot time. And we will decrease the weight counter again. We do this as long as the weight counter is bigger than zero. And if not, we increase our attempt counter to two. And now we start at the very beginning again. We ask ourselves, is someone on the wire right now? And most certainly the answer will be no. If someone is on the wire, well, no problem, because then we can wait all the time until the wire is free. And then we start transferring data again. And everything works just as before. And the interesting thing is, we transfer the first bit of our frame. We don't start our transmission where it stopped. I mean, obviously, since the collision was there, the other computers could not know how much of the data was correct or not. So we really have to restart the entire transferring of data. And as you can see now, there's a lot of bits and bytes flowing over the cable. And at some point in time, the transmission will be finished. Um, we waited a lot of clock cycles. And then we say, hey, the transmission was successful. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you and you now completely understand this entire diagram. I'm Rene Pickard speaking. And I hope you will enjoy the rest of the Web Science MOOC.